Now you guys know that I love soup, so I'm gonna share with you 10 of my favorite recipes that I've made throughout the years. The first one is chicken and potato soup. So I'm gonna start out with my instant pot, but you can do the same exact recipe in your slow cooker. Next, I'm gonna take three chicken breasts. Now these ones are frozen, so I'm gonna show you how to do frozen chicken breasts in the instant pot. So I always be sure my chicken is on the bottom of my instant pot. Now I'm gonna add my vegetables on top. So I'm just gonna pour in my potatoes. Next, I'm just gonna take a small bag of baby carrots, open it up and dump them in. So I'm going to chop up my onion, not in the tiniest pieces, I kinda like bigger chunks. So once I chop them up, then I'll just throw it right on top of the carrots. So for my seasonings, I added a half teaspoon of garlic salt and a half teaspoon of rosemary. So now it's time for the broth. You're gonna add eight cups of chicken broth. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually just enough to cover the vegetables. So if you're making this in your Instant Pot, go ahead and just put it right inside. If you're making it in your slow cooker, same thing. Take your pot, put it right inside of your slow cooker. So back to the Instant Pot, I put the lid on and I'm making sure that it is going to be on sealing, not venting, you want it on sealing. Then you're gonna push your meat or stew button and go up to 25 minutes in your Instant Pot. If you're in the slow cooker, you wanna do it for six to eight hours on low. So I let the pressure release on its own. So instead of bumping it over to venting, I let it sit there for about 20 minutes while the pressure went down and then I can open the lid. So now I'm just finding the chicken, which I was gonna pull it out and put it on that plate, but it just is so soft, it just keeps shredding. So I'm actually gonna shred it right inside of my Instant Pot pot. Now I love to put some cheddar cheese on top so my kids will actually eat it. First start by pushing the saute button. We're gonna brown the meat. Now I'm using ground turkey because that's one of my favorite things to cook with. When your meat is browned, you're gonna add one seven ounce can of diced green chilies, one 10 ounce can of Rotel tomatoes, one can of corn, and I left most of the liquid in there, one can of black beans, which I did rinse, and then one can of garbanzo beans. Then we're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes. Now it's time to add some of the spices. I'm going to start with a half a teaspoon of pepper and I'm kind of just eyeballing this and a half a teaspoon of salt. Same, just kind of eyeballing. Next we're going to add a half teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of onion powder. Now I had a half teaspoon so I had to add two here. And one packet of ranch dressing mix. Now I know that sounds weird, but it makes it taste so good. Then you're also gonna add one package of taco seasoning. I like to use mild. Then we're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. This is soup, so now we really need to make it into soup. So four cups. Now it's time to put the lid on. Make sure that it seals all the way, and you're gonna turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Then because it's the saute button, you have to push cancel first, then you're gonna push pressure cook and you're gonna go all the way down to five minutes. Because our meat's already cooked, we just need to make it warm. When it's ready to go, it will say on. That means you've done it right. All perfectly heated through and delicious. I like to add cheese, sour cream, even some tortilla strips on top of my loaded taco soup. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is kind of saute the vegetables to get them just a little bit softer and full of flavor. So we're going to go over to our Instant Pot. Now this is a Lux, it's an older version, but it, all the Instant Pots should have a saute button. So you're gonna just push the saute and then wait for it to get hot. So once your Instant Pot's hot, we're gonna add just two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil. Then we're just gonna mix this around, melt our butter, get the bottom hot and toasty so we can cook the vegetables. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna put in there is just one onion, all chopped up small. I like little onions. Then we're just gonna add about four to six stalks of celery, depending on if, how much you like. Then I'm gonna add four large carrots that we cut into little pieces, or if you're lazy, you can always just throw in some baby carrots, but I like, I like how these taste. Okay, once our vegetables are in, we're kind of just gonna stir it around with the oil and the butter just to brown them up a little bit. So this will take about two to three minutes just until 
your onions start to get soft, your celery starts to get soft, but don't worry, your carrots will cook as your Instant Pot cooks. Okay, as your vegetables are cooking, we're just gonna add four teaspoons of garlic in there. Make that smell really good with the onions. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. Now I'm going to add all my other stuff. So first I'm gonna just add two cans of crushed tomatoes. Now you wanna leave the juice in there because this is a soup, so you want it to be soupy. Mix that around a little bit. You can still have your saute on. It, will, it won't hurt anything. Now we have three tablespoons of tomato paste that we're gonna throw in there. Now I am just going to eyeball it because, you know, that's how I roll. Then we're gonna just add one packet of ranch. Now my secret, this is Kroger Ranch. Now you can buy name brand ranch, but you'll pay almost a dollar more. I love buying store brand because it's literally the same ingredients and it tastes just as good. So save a dollar here and there when you buy store brand. Okay, we're gonna mix this in for a little bit. Mmm, it's starting to smell really good. Okay, now we're gonna add the beef broth. Okay, so we have because it's a soup, we're gonna add four cups of beef broth, which is this whole entire container. I love buying these containers because I don't have to measure, I can just pour it all in. Okay, mix that around a little bit. Now we're getting pretty full on our Instant Pot. So this is a six quart. If you're gonna make this recipe with a three quart, you want to half the recipe or it's gonna overflow. So I, you can make this recipe just fine in a six quart or eight quart. All right, now the most important part is the meatballs. I just have a 32 ounce bag of frozen meatballs. This is one of my favorite brands. It's cooked perfect. This is kind of, these are the meatballs that I buy all the time. So I'm just gonna dump those carefully in without splashing too much. Okay, mix those around a little bit. Now there's enough liquid in here. It's not gonna burn. It's gonna be just perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on right now. Make sure that this little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Now, because we have the saute button on, we need to turn that off. So we have to push cancel. So we'll push cancel and then we'll push either, this is the old version, so it's a manual button or pressure cook button, depending on what you have. Now I love this because meatballs only take seven minutes to cook. So once you set the timer, you can just walk away. So when the timer is done, you're just gonna turn the little knob to venting to let out all the pressure and steam so the lid can open. So once the lid is up, oh, it smells so good. Nice, okay, we're gonna just dish it up and you guys will see just how yummy it is. Now my kids like this because they love the meatballs in it. I, I swear that's their favorite food. I like it because there's vegetables and other good things in it. Okay, so we're just gonna add some toppings onto it. So we like to add cheese because my kids will eat anything with cheese, right? And then just a little bit of green onions on top. Just give it a pop of color and a little bit of flavor. All right guys, there you go. I'm gonna start by adding two cans of canned chicken. Now you can use rotisserie chicken, you can also use just thawed chicken or frozen chicken. I'll tell you how to do that in just a second. So right now I'm just gonna add my two cans of already cooked chicken into the bottom of my pot. Next you're gonna add one pound of carrots. I just use the bag carrots, but you can use other carrots too. Now the recipe called for a can of corn, so I just cut up two ears of corn and then also one half onion. And I'm just gonna dump that on top of the carrots. Next, I added six cups of chicken broth. So I had a carton, which is four cups, and then a can, which is two. If you feel like you need more chicken broth, you can go ahead and add one to two more cups of chicken broth. Then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of green onions all chopped up. Now for the spices, I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a little bit of salt and pepper just for taste. Now, if you have pre-cooked chicken, you're gonna add your egg noodles right now and everything's just gonna cook together. So I added a whole bag. It was a lot of noodles. If you don't want that many noodles, I would probably do a half a bag or three fourths of a bag. So right now I'm just mixing it a little bit before I put the lid on. The noodles don't have to be covered. All right, so my lid is on, make sure it's on sealing, not venting, and I'm gonna go to five minutes. Now, here's the trick. If you want to cook thawed chicken that's not cooked yet, you're going to take, don't put your any vegetables in yet, and you're gonna go up to 20 minutes and just cook your chicken broth and your chicken. 
Then the last five minutes you're going to put everything else back in and cook the rest for five minutes. If your chicken is cooked, you're going to cook it all just for five minutes at the same time. I did a quick release there so I let all the steam out. Then once all the steam's out, you can open your lid and your chicken noodle soup is all done. I love that if you have pre-cooked chicken, it only takes five minutes to throw this recipe together. So I serve this recipe with a side salad and some breadsticks because usually that's what we eat with our chicken noodle soup. So I'm gonna start off with the celery. I have three stalks of celery or one cup that I just chopped up, one cup or one whole onion chopped up, four or five small red potatoes, then we have one pound of carrots, I just did a bag, one cup of frozen peas, now one or two cups of beef broth. The recipe doesn't call for Lipton onion soup mix, but I love it. Then you have one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and salt and pepper to taste. Woo, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by adding my meat to the bottom of my Instant Pot. Then just, you're gonna add everything on top. So I add my celery, my potatoes, my onions. I did all my big things first. So next I'm gonna add my carrots right on top and then my peas are gonna go right on top of the carrots. Now as you can see, I'm getting pretty close to my fill line, so I'm gonna try and spread it down as much as I possibly can. Then I'm adding two cups of beef broth, just because I want a little more liquid in there so it will pressurize a little bit better. Because this Instant Pot is full to the brim. Next I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. The recipe actually calls for one teaspoon, but I love Worcestershire sauce, so I'm doing one tablespoon. All right, and then you're gonna add your Lipton onion soup mix right on top. I probably should have added that before I added my beef broth, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna put my salt and pepper on top too. You can add more when it's done cooking, but I just added a little. Okay, now I'm just gonna mix in my seasonings a little bit. You don't have to get too crazy because it will all pressurize. Okay, I kinda made sure everything was flat so the lid would go on. Make sure it's on sealing, not venting. I'm gonna go manual all the way up to 30 minutes. Now, I did a quick release because we were starving, but you could let it release on its own if you wanted. Now I'm going to take the lid off and you'll see just how amazing this stew looks. It smells so good. So I'm gonna start by pushing the saute button because I need to cook my meat. Now, if you already have pre-cooked meat, that's gonna make this go by even faster. So right now, because it's sauteing, I put my meat in and I have this little chopster. I will put a link in the description for you because this is my favorite tool in the kitchen. Well, other than the Instant Pot, of course. So I'm just gonna brown my meat just right inside of my Instant Pot. Now once it's almost all the way cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add one whole onion and then mix that all together just so the onion can brown a little bit while the meat finishes up cooking. Now I'm gonna leave that there for just a little bit and stir every few minutes, but while that's finishing cooking, I'm gonna chop up one zucchini, two stalks of celery, and then pour those into my Instant Pot with my meat and my onions. Now I also chopped up two cups of small potatoes and about two cups of carrots. On top of that, you're gonna add about one teaspoon of chopped up cloves. Um, you can use whole cloves if you want to. Then you're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes. Now I'm putting those in now because my saute button is still on and I need some liquid on the bottom of my pan. All right, I'm gonna just mix these up a little bit and then continue adding more things. All right, so right now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning and three cups of tomato juice. Next, you're gonna add one can of dark red kidney beans. Now these I had rinsed and drained so they're ready to go. And then one can of cannellini beans, the white cannellini beans rinsed and drained also. All right, then you have one can rinsed and drained of green beans. Now, as you can see, my pot is getting really, really full, so just be careful as you're stirring. Now you're gonna add one cup of the little tiny minestrone noodles. These are my most favorite and my kids love them. You can add different noodles if you want to, it's totally up to you. So you're just adding one cup and then I'm gonna add about a cup and a half to two cups of beef broth. Now I don't wanna add too much more because it's gonna overfill. So put your lid on, make sure your knob is turned to sealing, not venting, 
Now you're going to cancel what you have going. So you're going to cancel the saute button. Then you're going to push pressure cook or manual. Now you're going to go up to six minutes. That's going to cook your noodles and your vegetables, everything else. When it's done, I let it release on its own for about 10 minutes or so. You can do a quick release as soon as it's done, but I was running some errands real fast. All right, now we're going to open the lid and see how it is. Oh, it is perfect. The noodles are done perfectly. Everything is cooked all the way through. Now here is the hard part. You have to mix very, very carefully. Now if you have an eight quart, this recipe is perfect for an eight quart, but a six quart will still work. All right, I need some more liquid in there, so I'm actually gonna add about one to two cups more of beef broth into my soup. Now if you noticed, I didn't add a lot of salt and pepper. Um, you can add that sparingly or you could put it on your table and they can add it to their own bowl of soup. So you're gonna start with one onion chopped up and two large sweet potatoes peeled and chopped. And they're gonna go right in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Next, you're gonna add about one cup of broccoli. I added about two cups because I love broccoli. Okay, then you're gonna add one to two cups of carrots. I just added the whole bag. Now to add the seasonings. You're gonna add one teaspoon of parsley, then one teaspoon of thyme leaves. And on top of that, you're gonna add about one teaspoon of pepper. Then add one to two teaspoons of salt. Now if you're making this vegetarian, you could add vegetable broth, but I like chicken broth, so you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now it's time to put the lid on, make sure that it's closed all the way, and that your knob is on sealing, not venting. Now because it's mostly vegetables, you only have to cook it for five minutes. I pushed manual for five minutes, and because there's no meat, you can also push it over to venting as soon as your five minutes is up. Again, if you want this vegetarian, don't add the bacon bits, but if you do like bacon, you can add as much or as little as you want. I just added a small package of it. So now we need to make the soup creamy, so we're going to add two cups of whole milk. You don't have to add whole milk, you can use skim if you want, but whole milk will make it nice and creamy. After I added my milk, I pushed the saute button so I could mix in the milk and the bacon and so everything is cooked together and the milk will warm up. I only had to saute it for about two minutes before everything was heated through. This is a perfect meal for a really busy night because you only have to cook it for about five minutes. So you're gonna start by putting two or three chicken breasts in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now these are chicken tenders. You can use tenders or you can use chicken breasts. Now, if you are making this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing that I do in my Instant Pot, except when it's cooking, you're gonna cook for six to eight hours on low. Next, you're gonna add two cloves of garlic. I also like to use the minced garlic, so it's about one teaspoon. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of chili powder. Oop, got a little too much there. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of Worcestershire or Worcestershire or whatever you call it, one teaspoon of that sauce. <laughs> then add one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce in it. Now that seems like a lot, but it actually isn't too spicy. If your kids are funny about spice, maybe do a half teaspoon. Then on top of that, I'm gonna add one small chopped onion. Next, add one chopped red pepper. Now they didn't have red peppers at my store, so I used an orange one. Then one can of drained black beans. Then you're gonna add one can of corn. You're not gonna drain the corn, dump everything in. Next, add two cups of your favorite enchilada sauce. Then you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now I love to get these big containers because I know it's already four cups and I can just dump the whole thing in without measuring. Next, you're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and then you're ready to cook. If you're doing the Instant Pot, make sure you turn the handle and make sure that the little thing is on sealing, not venting. If you're cooking with the slow cooker, put the lid on and set it for six to eight hours. With the Instant Pot, you're gonna go manual 
for 20 minutes. Now when it's done cooking, I did a quick release, so that means I pushed it over to venting and let all the steam out. And I'm gonna take the lid off. Oh, it smells so good. Now I'm just gonna find my chicken and shred it. Now with the Instant Pot, it is going to be really hard to hold on to and it will shred very, very easily. Now when you're done shredding your chicken, you're gonna add one half cup of cream and then about a half a cup of sour cream. I might add a little more because I love when it's nice and creamy. Then when you're done with that, stir it in a little bit so the sour cream can melt and the cream will mix in pretty good. Next, you're gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. Mix it really well until everything is melted and well combined. Now, if you're doing this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're just gonna make sure it's still on low while your sour cream and cheese are melting. When it's all done, I like to serve it with cheese so the cheese is melting, some little tortilla strips, and cilantro on top. So first you're gonna start with one can of chicken and dump it right in. Then one can of pinto beans one can of black beans. Now my beans have been rinsed and drained. Next is one can of corn, but don't drain that. You're gonna dump that right into your Instant Pot. Then we're gonna have one can of diced red tomatoes. Dump everything in, you don't wanna drain that either. And then one can of enchilada sauce. Now I usually use mild enchilada sauce because my kids don't like it spicy. Next we're going to add two cups of chicken broth and I have a little helper. She really wanted to help. And then for the seasoning, you're going to add either one packet of taco seasoning or about two to three tablespoons. However much seasoning you like, you can add a little bit more. Then you're just going to take a spoon and mix it all together. Now you don't have to use canned chicken, you can use normal chicken breasts. Just make sure you cook it accordingly. If you use canned chicken, you're going to cook it for 4 minutes on manual. If you have raw chicken, you're going to go up to 15 minutes. Now, when I do freezer meals, I don't whip up a ton of them at one time. I make one recipe and then I make the same exact recipe and stick that in the freezer. So my trick is, I like to use a water pitcher and put a plastic freezer bag just right inside of it. So I'll just do my same steps, a can of chicken two cans of beans that are rinsed and drained. Then you're gonna add your can of corn, remember leave the juice in there, can of diced tomatoes, and then one can of your enchilada sauce. Now it's gonna get a little bit full, it will seep down just a little. Add your taco seasoning, and then you're gonna add your two cups of chicken broth. Now if you are making this meal to go in your slow cooker, you're gonna cook it for three to four hours on low. Now you can cook it frozen or thawed, it doesn't really matter. Now once all my ingredients are in there, I'm going to slowly wiggle it out and zip it up. Now before I put it in my freezer, I'm gonna mix it a little bit, then take out any excess air that I possibly can get out of there. Now I like to store my freezer meals so they will lay flat and then I can stack them on top of each other. But if you wanna freeze it so it will fit inside of an Instant Pot, Put it back inside your pitcher and go ahead and freeze it just like that inside your freezer. All right, my soup is done cooking. I did a quick release just to make it a little bit faster and then I mix it up. I like to serve this with sour cream, cheese, green onions, pretty much everything you have on tacos, that's what you can put on top of this. First, we're gonna start with the vegetables. So I have a red pepper, a green pepper, about three stalks of celery and two cans of clams. Then we have half an onion and four potatoes. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and chop all of these up. I'm sure you would love to see me chop, but for cooking's sake, it's a lot easier. Now I'm just gonna dump all of my chopped vegetables into the Instant Pot. Now that all the vegetables are in the bottom of the pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add my clam juice. Now you don't wanna add the clams yet. We're gonna add those at the very end. So keep the little lid on so you can just pour the juice into the Instant Pot. Then I'm gonna add one cup of water into the Instant Pot to help pressurize. 
All right, now that everything is in for right now, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure your knob is turned to sealing, not venting. And we are gonna cook this because it's just vegetables. We're going down to seven minutes. So now we're gonna make a little ruse to thicken up the soup. So I have five tablespoons of butter that I'm putting over the stove top, and then I'm going to add in five tablespoons of flour. So that's easy, five and five. So once the butter's all melted, go ahead and mix that together. Now you'll leave it on the stove top for about oh, two to five minutes or so. Now when it's all done, it should look like this. This is the perfect time to add in your milk. So you can add milk or cream. So I added one and a half cups of milk. You can add cream, but we're making it a little healthier here. And you're just gonna continue to whisk that over medium high heat until all of the butter and flour and milk are all mixed together. All right, so now my Instant Pot beeped, so I'm gonna take the pressure out of the Instant Pot with a quick release and then pull the lid off. So all the vegetables are done cooking, so I'm just gonna add my butter and flour and milk mixture. Go ahead and mix that around a little bit and then it's time to add the seasoning. So I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of dried thyme, and about a half teaspoon of salt. You can add more if you'd like. Then, this is the secret sauce, Tabasco sauce, hot sauce, something to add just a little bit of kick. And then go ahead and add your clams very last. And that is pretty much it to this recipe. You go ahead and just mix it all in, and I just keep it in my Instant Pot on the warm setting until I'm ready to serve. So using the Instant Pot and the stove top at the same time, this recipe was done in 20 minutes. Now you can also serve this recipe with a little bit of parsley on top if you would like. In about two weeks, our Six Sisters Spice line is launching. So if you want to get on our wait list, I'll put a link down below for you in the description. You guys are not going to want to miss out. These are amazing. Now if you love these soup recipes, you're going to love this playlist of my favorite soups. All right guys, thanks for cooking with me. Bye.